friends, my name is Ankit Singh. I am a senior AXS developer at Paragat Technologies. Today, we will be creating a simple ReactJS restaurants app. So, we are building a nearby restaurant app where you can select your current location as well as specify cuisines and do a search operation. Once you have done the search operation, you can see all the results in your browser. So, how are you going to do it? First of all, once clicked on the search button, we are going to find user's current location that is latitude and longitude. We will be using this user's current location and use Zomato restaurants API to get restaurants information. This restaurant API has a developer friendly version where you are allowed to do 1000 requests a day and you are going to use that version. Once you have got all the restaurant information, we are going to take help of React and display the restaurant information on the browser. Without further to do, let's just have a very quick demo of our application. So this is how our restaurant apps look like. So here we have the name and we have the cuisine that you can specify as well as the search button. Let's just have a quick search operation performed over here. So once I click on search button, you can see the browser wants to know my location and once I perform allow it starts fetching my current location and then it starts fetching restaurants one of the restaurants information we have got from the zomato api we display in the browser and we display the name address what the cuisine does it serve what is the approximate cost for it and what is the rating of that restaurant currently we are displaying only 10 results but we can definitely increase the value or we can use pagination to display more information so what are you using? We are using React, we are using Babel and we are using Milligram CSS to style our application. We are using brackets as an ID and you are using Zomato developers API to get all the restaurant information. Let's just quickly go into our code and see how we have done it. First of all, we have included React library and React DOM library in our HTML file. Please remember this is not the ideal way to include react.js and react dom libraries in your application. We should be using amd that is asynchronous module loader and create a bundle file and load that bundle file in our html. To have this video in a very understanding manner we, are, we have included these two libraries in our html directly. We are also including babel so that it can transpile and convert the JSX or react code into plain JavaScript code. We are also using jQuery and we are using Milligram CSS to style our application. So if you see the system design, we have a search location and once the search operation is performed, we are going to display the search data. So based on this architecture, what we have done over here is we have created a react class this react class has an initial state where we don't have any cuisines uh, listed as well as we don't have any nearby restaurants and the operation that we are allowed to do is search so this is the initial state of the application once and when the application is loaded for the initial time this is how the application look like where we don't have any cuisine information and the operation that can be done on the application is search So, as we have known before, every React class should definitely have a render function. So here we have a render function, where we have included some piece of classes to make sure the application is center aligned. We have given our header and as well as we have given our input box. So here we have given input box an ID as cuisine and the value as this dot state dot cuisine. So when the initial load the value of this cuisine will become empty still and as well as once the something has been typed or something has changed on this input box we are going to fire this on change method this on change method takes the current text that you have written in your text box and updates the state so as you have known before again that once our state or properties gets updated for a react class the render function gets recalled 
So here, if I type something on this input box, the state gets changed, and again this render function gets invoked, and the value changes from here to the updated text that we have typed. Again, we have an input class where we have the value says this dot state dot operation, so that the button value looks like uh, the name that we have given in our state. So at initial load, the button value will be search. And again, whenever the click operation has been performed, we are going to do search operation and this is where the search method has been defined. Again, whenever the search operation is performed, we are actually updating the nearby restaurant list. And whenever we have a nearby restaurant list, we are updating over that particular list and displaying the restaurant information. So React gives us a map function where we can iterate to a list of elements and perform a specific operation. So this is again an executable piece of code which can be written directly in inside JSX code. So we have our restaurant information and we are looping through each restaurant. Once we have found each restaurant, we are returning some piece of JSX code or some piece of HTML code to our parent render function so that it can render list of individual restaurants. So here we are using thumb, name, uh, address, cuisine, currency on all these API values from our API. So these are information that comes from the Zomato API and we are directly using this. We are not manipulating any of the data and then changing it. So let us quickly go into the search method and find out how we have done it. So whenever the search operation is performed, first of all, we are changing the operation state to fetching location. That means the search button will have a new value as fetching location. We are using the HTML5 Navigator API to find out the current location of my browser. Once the current location of my browser has been fetched, we are updating the state of the button to be a fetching restaurant. That means that once the location has been fetched, the value of this button will become fetching restaurants. From the browser geolocation API, we are getting the latitude and longitude. And after we have got the latitude and longitude, we are forming the Zomato developers API. So here you can see you have developers with Zomato and we are specifying that count we need 10. That means start from the zeroth index and give me only 10 results. As well as we are giving latitude and longitude and within how, how many kilometers of radius I should fetch my current restaurants as well as if any cuisines we have specified. If we don't have any cuisine this will come as empty string and Zomato API takes care of empty strings. So we are doing an Ajax call this is a get call and before sending the request we are updating a user key. This user key can be obtained from the dev Zomato developers API web page and this uh, API key can be used to have this free version. Once the API call is done, we are getting this result when we are updating the nearby restaurants to be the restaurants object of the response that we have got from the developer's API. And as well as we are changing the operation to be search because we are going to uh, list down all the restaurants in my browser and user is allowed to do a search operation again. So if you go to our application again, this is how it looks like. So we have said some cuisine such as pizza and then once you do search operation, it asks for my location, I say allow and then the entire op operation happens. So here there are a few key things to remember. First of all, whenever we are iterating through a list of elements, React encourages to use some key called as key. This key is a very important property of React which determines or lets React to differentiate between two identical div elements. So here from a root scope we cannot differentiate if two restaurant uh, uh, elements are different from each other unless and until we go through each of the values of any div or this h3 and everything. That is why React asks us to create an index so that it can differentiate within going through the data. This allows for faster operation and again makes the DOM hierarchy very much flat. 
please remember this key is very important and this key should always be predictable this means if you are changing this key to a, some dummy value the react will always differentiate to dom element differently as a simple example what we can do we can refresh our application and you can see that here if i type some cuisine it gets updated because we are changing our state of this input box on each key type let's just have a key oper key value in this input type i can say key equals to i can give a dummy value such as hey or let me say it's input box this is my input box i have saved this application and i am restarting it and react can differentiate this key of this element is input box i can type something over here and that gets written now let's just change this input box key to a dynamic value i can simply do that by saying dynamic key and let's just create this dynamic key over here so i can say dynamic key equals to plus new date so this will give me a timestamp value of current time and that means every time i type because it considers millisecond it will have a different time so let's just go and refresh our browser and see so if you see once ever i type any particular text over here the focus goes out of this element because every time the key is changed react thinks that this input element is different from the previous rendered one we are changing the code to back to a normal piece and then this code should work perfectly fine so what we have learned we have learned that it is always to better to have get initial state method defined as our initial state in the application if you are using redux or flux architecture where you move this state data to our external store that is also fine we should always try to keep our state immutable and flat that means the state should never be able to change without an action and again the state should be flat and it should not have too much of indexing or too much of tree structure we should always specify key when you are repeating any element any render function and as we have seen the key should always be predictable so what can be done next so here we are only getting user's current latitude and longitude apart from that we can allow the user to select its current city we can have lazy loading feature where we can show more than 10 results whenever you scroll the application we can definitely have sorting and better scrolling options to coding wise we can use brazilify webpack to create bundle without including react and react dom directly in our html code we can use flux architecture such as vanilla flux or redux and es6 to make our code future ready thank you for listening to this tutorial and i hope you liked it stay tuned for more tutorials